I think it's more mysterious than uh, than we're letting on. I, I I don't understand why we all should just accept. And and I'm fully willing to be wrong, and I probably am. But how on earth are we just like, yep, this is Andrew now. That's it. He just stinks. March okay. later at four thirty. Yeah, exactly. Big word this segment. Well, actually, he's coming up at four, and I was, yeah. I misspoke. I think it's uh, I'm done with the whole like why portion of the Andrew well, Wiggins thing. I don't need to know why. I just do you understand what I mean by that? Like I'm not being salacious. Yeah, it's almost here. more like how how did this happen? Probably a better word. Not so much like why. Like you know why is Andrew not the player that he was? Is it is it family scandal? Is it family drama? Is it Jordan Poole being gone? You're more asking, like, how did this happen? How do you go from that player to this player this suddenly? And, and is, it, and is yeah. it recoverable? Yeah, see, I, I'm of the mind Which, that we, it's not. Well, and, and by the way, that is a relevant conversation whether you keep him or not. The problem is, is if you all think he's not recoverable, well, then you know what? Other teams might think that, too. And if they think that, why the hell would they give you anything for him? Yeah, I don't think that the Warriors think that, or at least they're not going to let you know well, of course that they not. think that, which is why Steve Kerr said on our show yesterday, our weekly interview, that he thought that Andrew's been playing great for the last couple of weeks. They're trying to keep Andrew's value high just in case another team out there does decide that Andrew can be the player that he used to be. Let's go to Big Al in Richmond. Hi, Big Al. You're on with Willard and Tibbs. What you doing? Hello, can you hear me? Sure can. Great. Uh, you're a first-time caller. Um, I really believe with Andrew Wiggins, whatever happened to him as a life experience, whether it was a death in the family, infidelity, whatever it was, certain people are built a certain way. I think he's a really good dude, but because he grew up, maybe you know Mitchell Wiggins was his father, he grew up in a good environment, that when something devastating like that happens in your life, you're not able to recover. You can't handle that. And sometimes that grief or whatever he's going through, you're never going to recover. And I'll make a, a, a point. My daughter, she played for Vonden High School. Uh, her One of her coaches, Allison Johnson, won a state championship. She was on the fast track to be very, very good at Vonden. As a sophomore, she played varsity. But when she went through what I went through a divorce with, with her mom and not to mention Kobe Bryant dying along with Gigi, who, by the way, she was playing with the Oakland Soldiers. After all that happened, she said she didn't want to play after her junior year. She never recovered, and to this day, she still has to play basketball. She doesn't like basketball anymore. But my point is, whatever sometimes we're going through, as great of an athlete as you are, it can affect you so mentally that you're never going to be the same. You're never going to have that fire in you to keep being good. And I think that's what happened with Wiggins. Whatever it was, his fire to play just went away because he's not built a certain way. You know, like a Draymond Green who, if something traumatic happened, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's been through a lot of stuff like he's been. He can recover from it. But because certain other people can't, I think that's what happened with Wiggins. Well, yeah, look, Big Al, you may, thank you for the call. You may well be right. I don't know about comparing someone who's still at an adolescent age when they go through something like a divorce of their parents. Uh, you know, you mentioned Kobe Bryant passing away. You lose your inspiration. I totally get it, and I can't tell you that that's not what happened with Andrew Wiggins. But I'll also say this. Like, this is somebody who has been playing at a high level at the highest level professionally for a decade. And it would be wild to me to think that all of that crumbles uh, because of family strife. And I have no idea what it was. And so I certainly, uh, I would not diminish anything, especially without even knowing what it is. Right. And that's on the table that it, it did go that way. But wow. Like the, that, that would also surprise me because I think that when, when guys, uh, when they elevate to that level, um, and this is one of the reasons I sort of feel the way I do about a lot of these players, they've already been through so much. They've achieved so much. They've blocked out so much. And and we sort of don't acknowledge that. We're just, oh, yeah, you know, they had a great skill and they made it. Do you know how many people have incredible skill 
and don't make it. No doubt. Because they don't have the backing, the mental side, the maturity, whatever. To get to that point to be the number one overall pick in the draft and then do 10 years of 19 points a game in the NBA, you've got to block out untold stuff and totally have an unbelievable focus. To then have a family situation, just make it to where you can't play anymore? Mm, that would surprise me. It's very possible. And you think about other athletes who have gone through mental challenges, mental difficulties. And I was thinking about Ricky Williams, who was, yep. you know, Heisman Trophy winner at Texas and great pro running back. And all of a sudden he got to a point where his own anxiety got the better of him and he was unable to really perform at that same level. And I think about Draymond Green and him going to the commissioner just a few weeks ago and saying, I'm out, I'm done, I want to retire. And that's based on a whole series of on-court and other things that have been troubling Draymond Green. And he got to a point where he was ready to break and he was ready to give it up. So I do think that what you're talking about, Mark, is accurate. The mental side of it, we will never know. Like you and I doing what we do, there's a certain amount of mental strain in anybody's job. And ours is unique because people can get to us on the YouTube feed, the Twitch feed, the text line. They can call in on X, on whatever. There are places where we can be criticized in other jobs. You probably won't face the same level of backlash that we do. And ours is not the most criticized career, to be sure. But every job is unique in that way. I just look at Andrew Wiggins in terms of he's still playing. So if he was really that burdened, like he was last year, whatever it was, family this or personal that, we don't really know officially what it was, he took time away. So now he's back. So you're back, play basketball. And he's playing basketball, but he's not playing as much or as well as he did. So to me, it's almost like you can't use that as a reason why you're not playing as well. Yeah, man. Because um, I mean, he's here. He's right. here, he's healthy, he's playing. And there are moments where he looks like Andrew Wiggins. Right. There are still moments where he looks like Andrew Wiggins. But why are A lot of them. Right. But it's not like, and I look at Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson has been a little bit more inconsistent. He's been playing great of late, but his year's been a little bit more up and down. But you can look at Clay and go, okay, you're almost 34. You've had two major surgeries. It makes sense that you're not going to be the elite splash brother as often as you used to be. Steph Curry's another good example. He's not been as consistently phenomenal as he used to be. He's almost 35. So you can look at that and you can kind of excuse it. You know what I'm saying? In yep. terms of, oh, that makes sense. It makes sense that Steph isn't, you know, knocking down every 38-footer like he used to. Now he's missing a couple here and there. But Wiggins, he's 28, almost 29. He's healthy. He should be he should be averaging his usual 18 or 19 a game. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We've always had should-be conversations about Andrew Wiggins. He should be better, um, and that's that's different. That's different than this. I mean, he, like, this This is not, boy, he, you know, he should hustle a little more. Boy, you'd, God, you'd think he'd be able to average 24 a night. You know, maybe he's not an NBA one. This is like, I, I, I mean, he's not a starter now? Like, he can't even start? Right. So um, he can go out two games in a row and score three? Like, I mean, that's like not even being there. So, um, all right, uh, Brian. Brian and Hayward. Hey, you're on with Willard and Dibs. What's up, Brian? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, so I'm one of those guys who has a business and I work another job, and I think of things as work and basketball only. And in a lot of – senses you know the guy at the top let's just call him Lacob, is the one who kind of finally makes the decision along with co-workers and things like that but um you know when we look at how life affects people in every day and you have to report to work um if you're sick you got to bring a doctor's note if you have a family incident well you have a family incident sometimes you know your employer is very uh understanding and patient with you and that's up to Lacob and, and, and all of his partners um, and Steph Curry. <laughs> uh, for the most part, it, it, it's an employer decision. And 
you know, we're consumers of this product and we all love it. And yeah, we're allowed to have our opinions. But at the end of the day, um, you know, the only guy really whose opinion matters is the boss. And to touch on that with uh, what one of the last callers said, um, I just I just really, uh, you know, think that it's time we, you know, make a hard decision. And I think the decision is to move on from him, uh, along with maybe Looney and, and Moody, if we can package a deal. Um, because we know what the big three can do when we have a good situation with them around. And I just want to end by saying, I really think Mike Dunleavy Jr. needs to suit up again because he's got that high IQ. He can shoot it from the corner. <laughs> um, I know he gets blown by on defense, but he needs to suit it up. We need to, we need to suit him back up, guys. And there I'll, you I'll go. Comments off All right, Thank Brian, you know. thanks. Yeah, he'd play the same level of defense the current Warriors are playing. I know that. <laughs> um, here's my question. Uh, because so many of you are so dead set now, you're ready. Let's trade trade Andrew. What are you satisfied with as far as a return? Because everybody I'm listening to right now says, yes, it's time to move on from Andrew Wiggins. All right, what does that mean? Like, give me five seconds. Do you not even care what you get back? It, like that, because that's moving on. Moving right. on from a player is not like, hey, we're open to. Uh, a transaction here. We're open to trade talk. We're going to try to make our team better. Moving on from a player is just like we just it's like cutting him, which obviously they're not going to do that. But are 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 y'all satisfied no matter what they get back? No, of course not. Okay, I want to get something back that can help me this year, even if it's expiring. And I think that Chris Paul would be a part of any trade that you're going to make. Period. If you trade Wiggins. You want to attach Chris Paul to it. If you're going to trade Moody, you're going to attach Chris Paul to it. I think that any trade you make, Chris Paul is a part of it for two reasons. One, what you talked about before, financial flexibility, or as we now like to say in the business, optionality. The Warriors want to gain some optionality by getting rid of the Chris Paul contract, even though you're going to be out from underneath it at the end of this year. If you attach it and you get back and expiring from another team, then at least you have a guy for two months or, yeah, the, the last two months plus maybe the playoffs who can help you now, and then that player comes off the books as well. Who wants that? What team? Like what wants, team? Yeah, who wants that? Andrew Wiggins is a 28, maybe 29-year-old guy who can still be a very good part of your team at this level. Not this team. It's the best thing anybody said about him all day. Oh, you're welcome. But, I mean. Steve Kerr thinks he's been playing great. Oh. Well. And his body of work indicates that he is still a very good player. Okay, wait. But maybe it's just, it's this situation. Yeah, let's talk about that. You said he can still be a very good player on a good team, but sure. not this team. Right. Why not? You tell me. You well, your answer is going to be because he can't play with Jonathan Kaminga. No, my answer is going to be, I don't know. Okay. The answer is... Then you also don't know that he can be a good player on a good team. Well, I do know that if the answer is that he just can't play with Draymond, Steph, and Clay and well, Kaminga anymore, or maybe it's he doesn't like the current state of the downtown area in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't know what the reason is, yeah, Mark, I just, but there is a reason. Can you at least give me this? There is a reason why Andrew Wiggins has gone from a consistent player... To this player. There's a reason for everything. So, right. of course. So, of the course. reason's either, the reason's one of a hundred different things. I don't think that the reason, the least likely reason is that he's just not good at basketball anymore. I think that's the least likely reason. So I think it's situational. Okay. It's operational, occupational. It is, I mean, whatever it is, maybe it has to do with this situation. I, I, I just think right now as we look at this, there's um, there's sort of a way to view the future. And if you ask me right now about Wiggins and Kaminga, if we go on that premise, they're not good together. All right, you got to move one of them, okay? Who do you want? And if you offered me the now Wiggins, obviously that's who you want the least. The now Kaminga, that's who you want next. But do you know who I want even more than both of those? The then Wiggins. Yes. The and then, then Wiggins. Wiggins. Then Drew Wiggins. And so, are you convinced that that person's dead? 
I'm not. Maybe he's just dead here. Maybe. And that, to me, if I'm the acquiring team, that is the question I ask Mike Dunleavy. What's the deal with Andrew Wiggins? And if the answer from Dunleavy is, well, you know, it's just situationally or whatever the reasons are, if it has to do with the Golden State Warriors, then you can sell to another team that the then Drew Wiggins, as I like to call him, he can be back if he's on Utah, Chicago, New Orleans, whatever team he ends up going to. If if it's a change of scenery that all is that's all he needs, yeah. then he becomes a more valuable asset to trade. Uh Tarog in Menlo Park. Hey Tarog, what are you doing? Hey guys, um thanks for taking up my call. Yeah. Um honestly I feel um I we would have not won the fourth championship without him. He was amazing that year. His defense, his rebounds, he, he put a lot of effort. And I feel one of the reasons that happened is because he was really mentored by Iguodala. If you see, like, Iguodala would actually pull him out of, uh, pull him out and, like, you know, talk to him, like, you know, motivate him, tell him what he did wrong. I don't think he has a mentor anymore. Probably he doesn't need a mentor, but I feel there's something missing. That if you want the then Andrew Wiggins, uh, there is some mental issue that he has that probably... He probably is working on, is taking time. Hmm. But also you need some mentor like Yegidala to help him. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, Tarak, thanks so much. Um, I hear a lot about this. This to me feels no different than the caller earlier who was like, you know what, how's he feeling about the organization after them trading Jordan Poole? These things are all valid as possibilities, but to me they're not valid as excuses. They're, they're, they're just not. Like, you're a 10-year professional. You need a mentor? It's almost 30. It's been an all-star. It's been a champ. He has averaging 20 points a game for 10 years, and now you need a mentor? Right. Or, or, or you don't like the team because he traded your buddy? Like, some of these opinions, while I can't say they're wrong, listen to what you're saying about Andrew Wiggins. You're calling him a feather. S-O-F-T. You're calling him the biggest feather in the league. And he took you to a title 19 months ago. Dunked on Luca. I just. Savagely. So you're not wrong. I have no idea if you're right. But my God, if these things are true, that does not speak well of Andrew if that's what you need at this point in your career. That's like act. I mean, that's like acting like he's Kaminga's age. Exactly. And as you mentioned, he's in his 11th year in the association. And he played high-level D1. And he's a guy who's been through the fires and the rigors of an NBA championship run. So what is it? And maybe it's just as simple as he's just not working out with this organization. Because Steve Kerr is trying to find ways to motivate him. And sometimes you take a player and you bench him, and it lights a fire, Mark. (laughs) You light a fire under a guy. Well, you benched him. And it didn't really light a fire. He's like, this seat is great. Yeah, exactly. This is super I kind of like it. So I'm making the same amount of money, <laughs> and I don't have to shoot, and I don't have to play 18 minutes. This is cool. Can I take this chair home with me? This is really comfortable. Pretty comfy. Yeah. So I, I don't know that he feels that way at all. And in fact, no, I but don't. there's I been mean, nothing that. No, he said publicly. He said he's he, he, he's fighting. Get it back. It's like I don't like this. I don't like not starting. I'm fighting to get my position back. He said that publicly. Okay, I, I mean, I, I don't see. No. I don't see a lot of fight no, when I watch him play. Don't see the results. Yeah, don't see the results. So um, I don't know if it's a situation where a change of scenery is what he ultimately needs to get back to the player he was. Maybe it's just time. Maybe he just needs to to spend time on the bench and then get things lined up and come back and make an impact in the second half. I don't know.